again and uh, you know when you have to go to a split call like that and you're, you're not quite sure what are your thoughts on that it probably feels like an eternity in a few seconds yeah well i took the fight on two weeks notice uh guy's super long with a ton of power counter striker so i couldn't just go rushing in there i had to kind of probe probe false starts a lot the volume was kind of low but man i just felt a couple of those punches and I, I realized quickly that's uh, that's why a lot of people don't make it out of the fights with him. So I had to be a little careful. I know it was close the first two rounds. Going to the third, my coaches told me, hey, we got to get this one. Uh, a lot of crowd support out there, especially at the beginning. Going to the third round, I felt it. Felt felt awesome to be fighting in my hometown. Kind of pushed me that third round to keep grinding. Was able to win that third round. I think that's what gave me the fight right there. How did it feel walking out, man? Did you feel that pop? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I've been all around the world. Most of the time, I'm the other guy. And, uh, man, I saw so many familiar faces, and, and just the excitement when I was getting uh, announced was incredible. Like, so, What kind of familiar faces? Like, are you seeing people like you went to high school with or weird things like that? Well, obviously, the gym support. So I co-owned sure, yeah. Pura Vida with Jake Clip. Uh, you know, a lot of up-and-comers. Everybody was showing up tonight. I saw a lot of familiar teammates. And then, yeah, friends, family. People I went to high school with, all sorts of people came out of the woodwork. Uh, you know, give me Facebook messages during the week saying that they were going to come in from out of state to, to go to this fight and stuff. It was crazy, man. You're a, you're a pretty big underdog. I don't know if you look at that kind of stuff. You're like three to one dog. You know, I used to look at that, that stuff, and I don't look at any of that stuff anymore. Comments, all these, you know, trolls and stuff on the Internet nowadays. Anybody can say whatever they want. Hey, I'm, a, I'm the one that's going out there and exposing myself for you all to see. And uh, I'm the one that's putting it on the line every day and going out there. So... I'm not going to worry about what other people say. I don't even look at the odds. How would it feel, though, to to, to know that? Hey, now that I know it, thank you. Uh, Yeah, and he's a a good prospect, man. I felt him. I felt him in the clinch. I felt him on the ground, like, kind of landed in, like, that modified half guard position. Normally, I can just stuff that leg down and start passing right away. This kid knew his stuff everywhere. What was it like stepping up on short? I mean, I wanted to take a little bit of time off. You know, I don't want to go rushing into fights after taking some damage and stuff. I want to make sure I get better. I want to make sure my brain heals, all that kind of stuff, right? So I was in no rush to get back. And then it became time where, okay, I'm ready to take that next fight. My manager and I were thinking maybe like February, but with the UFC coming in December, I really wanted to get on this. Card was already kind of filling up. Saw that uh, there was a welterweight fight, Eric Koch, you know, for whatever reason, coming up to that weight class and has also been a little inactive. So I wanted to stay ready, and uh, you know, my team, uh, you know, at, over at Pura Vida, we were keeping a close eye on things and just making sure that they were out, they were getting me ready in case something came up. We've had a lot of fighters with, sorry to cut you off. We had a lot of fighters with big fights coming up. I got to be on the mats to help them get ready for their fights. Guys fighting for LFA and, and UFC and stuff like that. So I'm always on the mats. I'm always uh, staying semi ready. And the, the call came in, I could take it. Do you have any idea why you didn't know where you had on the Was that was something that I have no idea. No Do you identify Eric Koch as, like, early on as somebody like, hey, man, this might be a guy that yeah, might be our way I, in? Yeah, you're always keeping an eye on the yeah. weight classes, right? And then I see, okay, there's a Walter Waite matchup, and it's Eric Koch, who was a 45er, then 55, now 70, and the fact that he's been, you know, in and not as active, you just look at the data, and so I thought, man, I, I better stay ready a little bit. You know, I got to keep my weight in a good area. I'm going to be on the mats more than normal, and uh, sure enough, that's what, well, that's what happened. Uh, my manager called me and said, you guys called it. Uh, Eric's got to pull out, so it's your fight. And of course, I was going to say yes. I, I even forgot who the opponent was. I mean, I was just like, yeah, I don't care who it is. I'm fighting in Milwaukee. What's, uh, what's your two, two, uh, 2019 need to look like for you now, now you know, coming off a big one like this? The kind of the emotional fact of, of fighting at home, taking it on short notice, pulling an upset. What is uh, yeah, what does they mean? Yeah, that, uh, that was my 30th sanctioned fight. Um, I feel like I've got the experience now. I'm, I'm turning 32 next week. I feel like with what we do, this is the prime of my athletic career. You know, these next couple years, I really want to push and keep moving up the ladder and reach my full potential. So I want to. I want an active. Uh, this. I want an active 2019. To see where it takes me. Do I have to win, but it's no amount of time to, to affect you. I've taken a lot of short notice fights. I think uh, all four of my UFC wins were taken on three weeks or less notice. So. I don't know when the pressure's on. Also, another time where maybe my job was in jeopardy. Fucking show up. Would you have taken this fight if it wasn't so important to you? Maybe if you're walking, would you have taken this one on two weeks? I don't know. Well, I mean, 
a lot of variables there to consider, hard to say. But with what was happening, I, I said yes, I had to. Just, just out of curiosity, you said you this was your 30th sanctions fight. Go on for how many unsanctions fights have you? Maybe double, but none in the last 10 years, so that's what's important. Okay. Grown up a little bit. It was a good outlet for those of you that maybe have some issues with that. So what was your record being in unsanctions? <laughs> Undefeated, of course, come on. A lot to zero. Are you a superstitious guy? I mean, you said that anytime you take a short notice fight, you've won. Do you have to have a, a ten week camp next time? I, I grew up playing right? baseball, actually, and baseball was like my favorite sport growing up. Pretty superstitious, you know. Like sometimes if I ate a worm before a game, we'd win. So then I keep eating worms before games, like that kind of shit. Like I used to be, so I, I try to cut all that out now. I don't look at streaks or what kind of socks I was wearing that week when I won or, you know, none of that stuff. I just, I knew, hey, it's game time. I, you got to show up, you know, and that extra little bit, you know, that third round when you got to grind, you got the crowd support. Um, I felt like I had, to, I had to give that extra little inch for Milwaukee, for my team, and uh, that, that little stuff helps. You're second baseman. What position do you play? I'm, I'm going second base. I was a uh, pitcher, shortstop. Pitcher. So you were the go-to guy. Those are two usually the two best players. Yeah, when you're a kid, you know, that's what they kind of stick stick the better guys at, I suppose.